before now, animals, including poultry, fish, and even pigs, have used insects as a source of food. For example, our local chicken will go out there in the fields picking up insects and, and eating. But now we are asking ourselves, what is it in these organisms that animals are looking for? Mm -hmm. Now, this is how research has come in to say, okay, let's profile the nutritional composition of these insects to see what is there that the animals so cherish. Fishermen use insects as baits. What is indeed that the fish are actually looking for when they're thrown into the water bodies? Today, we are hosting a, an expert, a prolific scientist. His name is Shafan. Shafan will introduce himself first. My name is Shafan Hyung Chia. I currently work in the Laboratory of Entomology here in the Netherlands. But specifically for me, I work as a postdoc looking at how insects production can be used as a source of food, either directly for humans or for uh, livestock feed. We grow insects using uh, organic residues, harvest the insects, use them for livestock feed or animal uh, food, and then we use the residues as an organic fertilizer. So in brief, this is what uh, I do as a postdoc. Now, this is hosted uh, within a project called the African Talent Program. To put it to perspective, I would like to start off by saying we promote insects for food and feed, now targeting poultry, pig and fish uh, sector. Now, currently, fish meal, soybean are uh, being used as the main protein source in these uh, livestock feed formulations. The implication is this. Currently, there is a great awareness towards uh, protecting the environment in which we live. So to say, we are trying to ensure that our biodiversity is not eradicated. And so if we continue to rely on fish meal, which is currently obtained from the, the, the water bodies, the seas and the ocean and so on, this production or this harvest of fish from the ocean is not sustainable because this is not being replaced, which means that in a later or uh, a period or so, there's going to be a shortage or the environment is going to be void of the needed biodiversity that we want to protect. The production of soybeans, which is another uh, great alternative for, for protein in animal feed, requires vast amount of land, water, and so on, and other, other resources for its production. Now, the question now comes, should we continue to rely on soybeans? The question is certainly no. This is where we come in now with what else can we rely on when soybeans is under pressure, when fish is under pressure. Now the concept of insects now comes into play. Insects, why do we choose insects? Insects are easy to mass produce. Why? In a small space of land or uh, at any facility you can produce comparable amount of insects in terms of volume, with little or no usage of water compared to the water that you use for fish production or for soybean production. Now, this is where the insect comes in as an advantage or as a sustainable alternative because it helps us to minimize water use, land space that we need to produce uh, protein resources for our animals. Now, in 2018, we conducted a research where we used uh, residues from beer production. This is a common product that is widely consumed in our communities. Mm -hmm. Now, when beer is produced, there is a leftover residue. We, we call it spent grain. Because we are asking ourselves, if insects are to compete with fish meal and soybean, what will they be read on to be able to produce the large quantities that fish millers or feed millers will require? So we tested this uh, spent grain on how the, uh, the performance of one of the insects, which is mostly red, the black soldier fly larvae. So this is one of the insects that we have tested to see how this can be mass produced using spent grain from beer production. This experiment we conducted in Kenya using the spent grain from the, uh, the East African breweries, which is located in Nairobi. What did we find? The insects can uh, successfully develop from the, the egg to the adult using these waste streams. This was one of the successes that we recorded in that experiment. We also went further to look at what are the environmental implications or factors that can influence the development of this black soda fly. What we found is that between 25 to 30 degrees, the insect performs best. 
So insects, again, these are animals that depend very much in the environmental condition and temperature being one of them, uh, the factors that affect the development. We also uh, went further to ask uh, pig, poultry, and fish farmers in four counties out of 47 in Kenya, if we were to produce insect-based feed and placed in the market today, because this is a concept that we are developing, targeting this uh, sector or these groups of farmers. So we wanted to know from them what is their willingness mm -hmm. to, to adopt this uh, insect-based feed. The surveying, we also now actually did a natural experiment where now insects red on uh, spent grains were used now as a, a protein ingredient in pig feed. This experiment, again, we conducted in um, central Kenya in Naivasha, where we wanted to know fish meal, as it is now, is one of the most uh, widely used protein ingredient when feed is formulated. Mm -hmm. Wanted to know what will happen if we remove fish meal and place insect meal, in this case, the black soda fly larval meal. Now, in that experiment, we replace fish meal content of conventional feed, 0, 25, 50, 75, and 100%, ending up with these five different uh, test diets. One with completely insect meal as the main source of protein, and the other fish meal as the main source of protein. In this experiment, we wanted to find out first, will the pigs accept? Mm -hmm. If they accept, will it sustain their, their growth? How will they generally appear when they feed on this insect-based feed? It was interesting to see that at the end of the, we had two phases of this experiment, the grower phase and then the finisher phase. The grower phase when the animals are about 50 to 55 kilograms of live body weight. At this first phase, what we, we, we concluded, and we also published this in a separate uh, journal in the animals, we concluded that insects added in growers uh, feed successfully allow them to grow. But at that point, we did not see any uh, increase in their growth. But the positive thing there was that it did not also affect negatively their growth. So they were able to carry on with normal development, whether fish meal or oh, insect meal. Okay. So this was the key message we got from that phase of the experiment. Now, after this phase, we continued the experiment now to the full market size, where the animals now grew uh, until they were able now to be slaughtered. Again, now this is what even made it more interesting. We saw that even though there was no uh, positive uh, effect at the grower phase, which was the younger stage of the animals, at the finisher phase, now the animals were even able to grow better in insect-based feed. And interestingly, we had the highest animal in terms of body weight, where we had 100% replacement of fish meal with the insect meal which the animal weighed 120 kilograms. So this was quite remarkable. These are animals we started when they were 18 kilograms of body weight averagely. And at the end of the experiment, the highest, which was 120 kilograms of body weight, was when the, insect, the, the pigs were fed insect-based feed at 100% replacement. Mm -hmm. We did not end there. Mm -hmm. Now we have gone a little further to look at, okay, what happens to the welfare of these insects? We, we looked at the different slaughter methods, the different killing methods. How are the black soda fly produced and then killed for food? So we try to address the aspect of, do they feel pain? How long do they, uh, are they subjected to pain? Is this only the scientists and the, uh, and the companies that can produce incense or farmers can also engage in the production of the incense in their own small space? Uh, the beauty of the concept of insects for food and feed, and also why it is widely seen as um, a sustainable alternative, lies in the simplicity of the technology itself. With the insects, more than um, just an average farmer who has maybe just a few birds to a farmer with hundreds of birds, for example, in terms of poultry, can produce this. How? Like I mentioned, for insects, for food and feed to, to thrive, these insects should and must be reared on substrates that are of little or no direct value to humans or other uh, livestock. That way, these insects are reared on substrates that will not put financial constraint 
on the producer, in this case, our um, uh, research, uh, how do I call it, resource limited farmers. So substrates that are readily available where in our local markets where fruits and vegetables are sold in our grocery stores, these are sources of getting substrates to mass rear these insects. Secondly, the black soda fly, for example, this is an insect that is widely available around garbage uh, points in our communities, which means a farmer can readily trap this insect into his or her colony and then start up a colony. So it is very simple. You don't need to be a, a, a professor. You don't need to be a doctor. You don't even need to be a scientist to be able to start an insect colony that will produce you the protein source that you need for your animals and even for the market where you have access. So it is. this is where the strength of the technology lies. It's simplicity and then the, the, the demand or the request for little capital for startup.